Please welcome Executive Vice President, Experiences and Devices, Rajesh Jha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Rajesh Jha, and I lead Experiences and Devices at Microsoft. I'm just so incredibly excited to be here today to discuss how together we can shape the future of work with AI. And then Panas is going to join me later, and he's going to talk about the future of Windows. So yesterday, you had Satya, Kevin Scott, Scott Guthrie talk about the co-pilot stack, the AI architecture of the future. Today is about bringing that AI stack to Microsoft products that hundreds of millions of people use every single day. Microsoft is going to democratize the opportunity for developers that means you and us working together to bring this new capability to users around the globe. Satya talked about it yesterday, and I've been in this industry a long time. I do think we are looking at the next frontier of computing. When I started in the industry three decades ago, a long time ago, graphical user interface was democratizing computing by making it accessible to people around the globe millions and millions of people started to be able to use computing. And AI is even more accessible. It's even more powerful. And working with you, we can transform the way work is done in society, letting people use natural language to do their work. First, I wanted to take a step back <clears throat> and talk about a survey that we call the Work Trend Index. We talked to 30,000 <clears throat> customers, employees, leaders around the globe in 30 different countries. And so we asked them how they thought work was evolving. And then we also asked, of course, about their perceptions and expectations of AI. And perhaps it won't surprise you <clears throat> that these 30,000 people around the globe, the one thing on the average that showed up was they're spending two days out of every work week coordinating in meetings, communicating. And so no wonder <clears throat> two-thirds of them, 64%, they said they are not able to keep up with work. They're struggling to innovate. And the leaders said the same thing. Three out of five leaders, they said their teams were not innovating enough. And then we asked them about AI. Unsurprisingly, one out of two said they worry about what AI means to their job, what it means to their current set of skills. But fully 70% of the same set of people said they want AI to be able to delegate work to AI so they can do meaningful work. That is our collective opportunity. And why am I optimistic? Why together can we make a difference? Because these Microsoft products, they power businesses small and large around the globe. These are productivity tools, communication tools that people use to get their jobs done. Bing, 100 million daily active users. Bing and Bing chat. People are finding information. They are learning. They are researching. Windows needs no introduction, a billion people around the globe using it every single month, a billion. Microsoft Teams, 300 million monthly Teams users doing collaboration, communication, productivity, synchronous, asynchronous for this modern world. And you've been a part of this journey. It's exciting to see the work that has been done by developers we have 1,900 applications in the Teams App Store, and perhaps as impressive, 100,000 applications have been created by customers, developers creating line of business applications to bring productivity, business process in the flow of work. So today, we're going to talk about the Microsoft 365 Copilot and the, our opportunity with the Microsoft 365 Copilot to shape work the future of natural language. Panos is going to talk about the future of Windows and what that means in this AI world. 
But first, you know, I want to share with you a little bit about how we thought about designing the co-pilot. You've heard Satya talk about it. We started with the spirit of co-pilot, advancing the human agency, putting the user at the center, being grounded in the user's context. This is not autopilot. It's about letting people achieve more by having the AI work on their behalf, being grounded in their context. That is what you're going to see in the design language of all the experiences we build. And we're going to make this design language available to developers. As you extend AI, as you build AI applications, you'll be able to use the same design language. So to show you our vision with a co-pilot, let me run a quick video. Now, the Microsoft 365 Copilot is not just about taking the most powerful foundational models. Yes, it is that. We are running some of the most powerful models out of Azure with the full safety delivered by the Azure Cloud. But it's about grounding this AI, these foundational models, in the user's context. Who do they work with? What do they work on? Their meetings, their conversations, their documents. That is the Microsoft Graph. So the Microsoft Graph represents the user. It represents their context. That is what grounds the AI. And then the user experience is brought to applications and workflows that people are already using, whether it be in Office or Teams, and as you will see on Windows. That is Microsoft 365 Copilot. It is a system. Now, there are two capabilities that you're going to see today with the Microsoft 365 Copilot. You, of course, have the in-application assistance. And that's about completing the task at hand. When you're creating a document, whether it be a report or a presentation or a financial model, the AI powered by natural language is right there with the rest of the community in the application, right by the user to help them complete their job. So the in-application assistance is exactly what you saw in the video. That's what you would expect to see work. I'm also excited about the cross-application intelligence layer. This is like chat GPT for the enterprise. This in-app cross-application intelligence reasons over the users, all of their programs and applications, their personal data represented by the graph, their enterprise content. It brings all these workflows across the myriad of contexts and applications that a user uses. This is what I mean by user at the center. Less about the apps, but the user at the center bring everything around them, like chat GPT for the enterprise. So today, for the rest of this conversation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about the opportunity we have for developers. And we'll talk about this in four chapters. We'll talk about how can you extend this cross application intelligence, then how can you plug in at the data layer with the Microsoft Graph? How can you extend the in-application assistance? And then finally, we'll talk about developer success. What does it mean end-to-end -end based on the feedback you've given us over the years? So chapter one, let's dive in into the cross-application intelligence layer in Microsoft 365 Copilot. It works across all your applications your data, your organization's content. It's available where the users are in Teams. It will be in Windows. It will be in the M365 app. And so to show you what it looks like, I'm going to invite Archana. Archana, welcome. Thank you, Rajesh. Hello, everyone. Very good morning. Now. I'm going to show you how the Copilot is grounded in your company's data, thereby helping you work more efficiently and effectively. 
For this demo, I'm playing the role of Anika, who is an account manager. I have an important monthly sales meeting coming up with a customer at VentureWorks. My company uses both Microsoft 365 and Dynamics 365 to manage AdventureWorks relationship. First things first, I'd like to know when is my next monthly sales meeting with AdventureWorks. So I go ahead and ask that question to Copilot. Copilot is grounded in data from Microsoft Graph, so it can access my emails, calendar files, conversations, and more to help me with such specific information. I can also ask Copilot to do more than simply fetch information. For instance, I can ask it to summarize all my latest correspondence with the meeting organizer, which it does so by summarizing my emails. Now, in this email summary, I see some interesting order information, and I'd like to learn more. And because Copilot is also grounded in data from Dataverse, which is where my company's Dynamics 365 data is stored, Copilot can help me with specific order details, along with a link to the order itself that I can then click through and learn more about. And finally, I can also ask Copilot to take actions on my behalf, like, for instance, to help me draft an email with everything that I just learned, like the email correspondence summary and the sales order activities, so that I can email that to my colleagues. Copilot helps me with this really useful email draft, which, of course, I can update with more information, personalize it and make it my own, or simply copy and paste and send it via Outlook. So that's how, by helping me find, summarize, and synthesize information from all across my business data sources, Copilot helps me work even faster and makes me even efficient and effective. Thank you, and back to you, Rajesh. Thank you, Arjuna. <clears throat> so to recap, what you saw was a simple natural language interface that captured the user's intent. It didn't matter if the data was in the graph specifically or whether it was in some line of business uh, schema like the data wars. And so the copilot was able to reason over all of that and then available where the users already are. Now let's talk about extensibility. Yesterday you saw that we are going to make the Copilot extensible with plugins. And I want to talk to you more about what that means. So <clears throat> when you send the Copilot with plugins, the M365 Copilot, the Copilot is able to get your information's data. You get to control the user experience. And the Copilot is able to act on the user's behalf. Now, <clears throat> we've settled on the same open standard as ChatGPT plugins. So OpenAI and Microsoft, we basically are looking at the open standard. You take an open API, all that you need as a developer, an open API, a manifest, and then you can create a plugin, and that plugin works in ChatGPT, it works in Bing, it works in Microsoft 365, and more. And I think Scott showed you how he was able to create a plugin that worked in ChatGPT. And it was about a plugin that reasoned over a product catalog in natural language, brought the relevant content, and he showed that working in ChatGPT. That same plugin you will see now working in M365, Microsoft Teams. So in the co-pilot experience in Microsoft Teams. That's what I meant by the inter interoperability of the work that you do. You do the work once to express an open API endpoint, and then you get the portability of your extensibility into all of these co-pilots. Now, here's the great news. That's not the only way to extend the co-pilot in Microsoft 365. All your existing investments, message extensions, so today, many developers are extending the team's messaging. So you're able to throw your custom conversation types into the flow of conversations. Now we made that same thing work in Microsoft Outlook. And that is also going to work as an extensibility in the co-pilot. Furthermore, over the years, we worked 
with many developers to take Power Platform connectors and connect them to all sorts of backend data sources. Each of those connections are also available as a new skill for the copilot. This copilot is like the operating system for productivity and business process, and we do that together. You build the extensibility through a plugin, whether it be the, uh, you know, the uh, open API standard plugin or a message extension or using the Power Platform connector. Now, that is why we are excited that we're going to have thousands of plugins available for Microsoft 365 Copilot. It's not only the new plugins you build in the uh, chat GPD style of plugin, but also the existing message extensions, the existing Power Platform connector to business applications built by ISV and corporate developers that will all be available as plugins for Copilot over the coming months. Now, I'm also very excited to talk to you about the tooling work that we've done with our colleagues in Visual Studio. We built a Teams toolkit to make it incredibly easy to go build, debug, and deploy these plugins. And who better to show that to you than Archana? Please take it away. Thank you again, Rajesh. <laughs> it's demo time. Now, I'm going to show you how you can build a plugin to extend Copilot using the Teams Toolkit extension in Visual Studio Code. I already have Visual Studio Code running GitHub Code Spaces open in this machine here. Like Rajesh said, all you need to build a plugin for Copilot is a RESTful API that follows open API specifications. For this demo, we are going to use a repairs API, which we have already built following the open API spec. So this is a Node API built using Express in uh, GitHub Code Spaces. First, let's simply explore the API. To do that, I've set the breakpoint in the project already and started the DB configuration. So let's switch over to the Swagger UI. Like you can see, the DB, uh, Repairs API supports basic create, update, list, and delete operations on the Repairs entity. Let's explore this. Let's go ahead and look for all the Repairs assigned to a maintenance staff member. When I do that, the breakpoint is hit in my project. And like you can see, the response is returned. And the response contains basic metadata about the repairs entity itself, like the ID, the description, the staff member to whom it's assigned to, and so on. That's it. This is a simple API, which we are now ready to convert into a plugin for the copilot. To do that, we are going to switch over to the Teams Toolkit extension which is right here. I'll say create a new app. And then from the new project dropdown, I'm going to say plugin for Copilot. I'm prompted to enter an open API spec that defines my API shape and form. I already have one created for our repairs API, so I'll reference that. Like you can now see, I'm also prompted to select the methods in my API that I want to expose as operations in my plugin. I only want list and create repairs as the two operations that my plugin should support, so I'll, rep I'll select those. Of course, I need a project folder location and a project name itself, and we are ready to go. Now, the new project is being created and opened in this new browser tab. Um, now, a plugin has two key components. Number one is the manifest file that defines the plugin's basic configuration metadata. And number two are the adaptive cards, which define the UI using which users will interact with my plugin. Now, the cool thing here is using the open API spec, which we just referenced a few seconds ago, the toolkit extension has already created both the manifest file and adaptive cards for me automatically. So let's click into each of them and explore. First, the manifest file. Like I said, the manifest defines the basic metadata and configuration about my plugin, like the plugin name, the description, and all the operations we just explore, exposed for our plugin. Now, plugins can also support, support authentication. So if your plugin supports auth, you can specify that in the manifest. Repairs API supports anonymous access, so I'll skip that step. Next, let's click into the adaptive cards. Like I said, adaptive cards define the UI using which users will interact with my plugin. 
Using the Repairs API response parameters, Teams Toolkit extension is already created at AptoCuts for me, which, of course, I can change. For instance, I'd like for this thumbnail image of the repair ID, repairs item, to be a bit larger. So I'll go ahead and make the change. And like you just saw, the changes are reflected in real time in the preview surface, making it super easy for me to make these changes. All right, so we made a couple of changes, and we are ready to test the plugin. To do that, we'll switch over to the debug configuration and then say launch in Copilot. When I do that, Copilot will be opened in Microsoft Teams, and my plugin will be sideloaded and made available for testing. So now let's, we are ready to run a quick test. Now, Copilot will open in Microsoft Teams, and I can go ahead and test with a prompt to fetch the repairs that are assigned to a maintenance staff member. When I do that, the repairs API that we just specified in the manifest is being invoked, and the response from the API is being fetched and rendered in the form of both text and adaptive cards, which we designed in the toolkit. So there you have it. Awesome. So we just built a plugin using an existing API and have it already working in Copilot in Microsoft Teams. And we did all this with just a few steps in under five minutes. Go build these. Thank you. Thank you, Arjuna. Awesome. So I think this toolkit to build a plugin is going to be a huge time save for the developers to extend the Copilot capabilities. We would love your feedback as you use the tool in the coming weeks. So we talked about extending it you know, at the cross-application layer. I want to now talk about extending the Copilot at the, at the data tier. So the Microsoft Graph, think about the Microsoft Graph as something that gets built and refreshed every single day from the trillions of signals that we get from customers as they use Microsoft 365. Every day, we see hundreds of billions of documents and messages. And so what the graph is, it's partitioned by customer by tenant, because the graph belongs to the customer. And it is permissioned by user. So whatever I have access to is what the graph represents. So we take the Microsoft graph, and that is the brain behind the Copilot's amazing reasoning capability. So we take the graph, we ground the AI, in all the user's context. And like I said, the security is and the permissions are maintained because the graph represents exactly my, the individual's permissions. And so the graph is being used, the customer's data is being used to ground the AI. We, of course, do not train the AI on customer's data. We use that to ground it. And the Microsoft Enterprise Compliance Promise Basically, we treat all the interaction of the user with the AI no different than we treat their documents or messages. Now, there's one other very important thing that we are doing to bring the graph forward for the world of natural language. Human language, natural language, needs a deeper semantic understanding of the graph, and so we are now building the semantic index. Let me talk about that for a bit. The semantic index is, of course, a vector index. It's an embedding space for the billions and billions of entities in the graph. But it is much more than that. It is an understanding of the relationships that exist in the graph. What do I mean by relationship? Every one of us, we work with colleagues. There are some meetings that really matter to us, some documents that are trending in our organization, the projects we care about, the tasks assigned to us. That is the relationship that's captured in the semantic index. That is what allows us to then take the natural language intent expressed by the user and get the most relevant con uh, data to go into the AI. And that is what we want to make available to developers. I want the semantic index to be as powerful an asset for developers as we use it internally for first party. And the way you do that is by extending the semantic index with graph connectors. And to that end, I'm going to invite Yina, who's our expert 
She's going to talk about how plugins and connectors work together. Welcome, Ina. Thank you, Rajesh. Hello, Bill. I am Yina, and I lead the Microsoft Graph team. So far, you have seen the power of plugins integrated with Copilot and how you can get started building them. We have also shown the value of building a Microsoft Graph connector to bring your data into the semantic index for Copilot and message extensions to integrate seamlessly in Teams and Outlook. Now, I'm going to show you a scenario that illustrates how all of these things can work in Microsoft 365 Copilot together. In this demo, we're showing you how Daniela, who's a project manager at Densu, which is an integrated marketing and media company, might manage the process of updating the branding of a client's website. First, she uses Copilot to gather and summarize information about the website deployment guidelines. Second, she uses Copilot to invoke plugins in context. Here, she created a Jira a ticket in her project management tool and assigned it to someone on her team. And finally, she asked Copilot to retrieve and update a Contoso logo to the newly created project management ticket. Now, here, all of these happened on a snap. But consider how tedious it would have been to do all of these manually. It requires multiple steps, aggregating information from multiple sources, and working across many different interfaces. With Copilot, she can do all of it without breaking the flow of work. Now, let's take a closer look at what is really going on on each step on this process. First, this is the first turn. It's gathering information. Here, you're seeing the deep retrieval and summarization capabilities of Copilot. Copilot is not only able to traverse all the data that Dentsu has in Microsoft Graph to include SharePoint documents, Outlook emails, Teams chats with colleagues, and more, but it is also traversing data from Confluence using a Confluence Microsoft Graph connector, which is bringing index data from Confluence into Microsoft Graph. In addition to what Copilot extracted from Confluence, it also includes new steps in the process that were identified from email data, like the rollback plan, updating the logo, and the performance monitoring. Copilot returns a summary of all of the deployment guidelines with citation for each relevant artifact, chats, emails, and documents. And now, because Copilot is powered by full semantic search, it was able to include steps in the deployment guidelines that otherwise might have been missed. Now, the second turn. Here's where Copilot, we are invoking plugins in context. Densu uses Jira as their ticket management tool. Jira integrates with Teams and Outlook using a message extension. With Copilot, the Jira message extension now functions as a plugin and creates a ticket using the context and information gathered in previous turns. It pre-populates several fields, in the pro like the project name and the summary, and it also includes a description based on the context it found on an email. Now, but as helpful as Copilot may be, we still need to have, make a few edits, like adding the ticket owner, and then we're all set. Now, back in Teams, Copilot has already summarized all of the actions, as we're going to see in a second, including the reference to the newly created ticket. Now, the third and final turn for this demo. Here's where Copilot interacts with an enterprise application, in this case, to retrieve a branding asset. Densu's brand web catalog is in their internally developed CS Assets application, which integrates with Teams using message extensions. Using precise language in the prompt, like the example in the asset catalog, increases the fidelity of Copilot's response. When we have confirmed that Copilot has retrieved the right branding asset from this line of business tool, it is just a matter of telling Copilot to update the Jira ticket with the Contoso logo for reference and Copilot does the rest. Finding the previously created ticket from the context, invoking the comments dialog, and pre-populating the comments with a link to the logo file. Copilot then summarizes the changes to the Jira ticket and includes the references to the artifacts. And we're done. Yeah. 
So to summarize, as a developer, you can use Microsoft Graph Connectors to bring your data into the semantic index for Copilot. You can also use plugins and build plugins to integrate skills into Copilot. These plugins can be from the OpenAI standard, or they can be message extensions. And finally, Copilot can combine insights from Microsoft Graph Connected data with actions coming from the integrated product plugins into multi-turn processes, boosting productivity and co keeping customers in the flow of work, all while preserving the integrity of your app experiences and the attribution to its content. Thank you very much. Back to you, Rajesh. Thank you, Ina. That was awesome. So we, what we just saw was how, by using the Microsoft Graph, you get the full power of the semantic index that we built. And we want developers to, to be able to take full advantage of our investments in Microsoft Graph and the semantic index so we have a deeper understanding of the user's intent. Now let's talk about extending in-application workflows. Good news is the way you extend that is the exact same way you extended the cross-application capability. The same architecture for plugins and message extensions also work here. And this is about bringing the full power of all the commanding. You think about our Office applications and your Windows. There's so much richness. Now we're going to unlock that with natural language. And you're going to be able to extend that as developers. And so I'm going to invite now Wombita to actually show you this in action. Welcome, Wombita. Thank you, Rajesh. Good morning, everyone. In this demo, I'm Daniela, an account manager at Adatum, a renewable energy company. And I have an upcoming sales meeting with Relicloud. Let's see how easy it is for me to prepare for my meeting using the Viva Sales integration with Copilot. Starting in Word, I use Copilot with Viva Sales to quickly assemble several relevant resources from my CRM system, my calendar, and Word documents from my company's OneDrive. Copilot then generates a summary document for me using the information gathered. And as I scan through the document, I notice a specific deal that looks relevant to my upcoming meeting. So I prompt Copilot for more details. Copilot uses Viva Sales to retrieve a detailed summary of the deal and prompts me to add it into the Word document. With the document updated, I save it to my CRM system. I can also use Copilot with Viva Sales during my pitch call on Teams. Copilot can process my customer conversation in real time. And using Viva Sales, it's able to recognize that the customer has mentioned a competitor, Prosware, is also pitching to Relicloud. Viva Sales prompts me to get more information on Prosware and quickly returns an analysis of its strengths and weaknesses. And when the customer asks for insights into how similar companies have deployed a datum technologies, I can prompt Copilot to pull up the customer success mural that my field engineers and I use to document our success stories and share them directly into the meeting. We agree on next steps, including a formal proposal review, and we're done. Now, I want to create an engagement report, something that would normally take me about 30 minutes to complete. But without leaving Teams, I can prompt Copilot and Viva Sales to do it for me using the meeting transcript from my Teams call. Soon, Copilot produces a Word document I can edit and save into Relicloud CRM records. After my conversation with Relicloud, I think I'm close to closing the deal. So I send an email to Kat on the legal team 
asking for help drafting a contract with a 15% discount applied. I've attached a typical master agreement for reference, and when Kat receives my email, Copilot gives her the option to draft the requested contract in Word. And when Kat launches Word, Copilot already has the context it needs to assemble a draft. All Kat needs to do is hit generate. Kat's team uses Thomson Reuters legal services. The Thomson Reuters plugin enables access to multiple trusted resources, including practical law to support drafting and Westlaw to assist with legal research. Kat can modify the contract generated by Copilot for Word. For example, she can replace the limitation of liability clause and verify her changes are enforceable in California. Cat prompts Copilot to provide her with a summary of changes by clause for a quick review using Thomson Reuters Document Intelligence Service to quickly extract and compare modified clauses. With her review complete, Kat can now send the contract back to me for presentation to Relicloud. Thank you. Back to you, Rajesh. Thank you, Amita. It's pretty cool to see how these sophisticated workflows are all happening in the application and developers adding to the you know, just the friction-free nature of completing these business processes. So, in a similar vein, we've been working with partners like SAP, and there was this announcement last week of how SAP Success Factor is plugging into the Copilot inside of Microsoft Word using the Copilot extensibility. And so, for example, if I'm creating a job description, you know, the data in the SAP Success Factor helps me create this with all the right metadata, all the fine tuning made possible by the business logic and SAP success factor. So in a similar way, I'm also very excited to announce the Microsoft Syntax plugin for the Copilot. For those of you who may not know, Microsoft Syntax is content AI. Every organization has tons and tons of content, whether it be in SharePoint or OneDrive or Teams and a bunch of other places. And so Microsoft Syntax is an AI tool that enables classification, that enables workflows that are possible on this content, unlocking the knowledge in an organization. And now that entire corpus is available as a plugin in Copilot, and that allows business processes to be grounded in the user's context in the plugin. So let's take a look. The Syntax plugin makes it easy to add new content as a column, automatically extracting metadata, all from within Microsoft 365 Copilot. You can leverage the metadata to search and find relevant content with precision. The plugin will enable you to build new documents from structured templates, combining data sources and your own inputs. and review that new document, spotlighting key details. When you're done, the same plugin can add Syntax e-signatures to your documents for your approval, all from within Microsoft 365 Copilot. So what we've seen so far, you know, if I was to summarize the extensibility that we walked through, first, plugins, whether these are Chat GPT style plugins, all you need is an open API and a manifest. Whether it be a message extension, your existing investments. And then we showed a toolkit, the Teams toolkit. And finally, we talked about how to extend the graph with graph connectors. But we know that what's really important is to enable your success as developers. And we've really been working on the feedback we've gotten from developers in terms of it's not just about the productivity of the developers, but it's about the impact of the work that you do. How do we get you distribution and reach? 
How do we enable end-user discovery of the work that you do? And then if you're an ISV, how do we help you monetize that? So let me just take a few minutes and walk through each one of these. On productivity, just as you saw in the demos today, we make it possible for you to create a plugin easily. You can customize the user experience with adaptive cards. And then you can debug and deploy this once and have it work in the host applications or as Copilot extensibility. Now, in terms of reach, of course, in the organization, IT has the accountability for making sure any application is secure, that data privacy is maintained. And you, gotta, you have to earn IT trust. And it's something that Microsoft you know, has spent a lot of time with IT on. And so our investments on reach really are to help developers to make their applications compliant. So what we have is an, a tool now that that assesses and suggests remediation for your application to win IT trust. Based on feedback from developers, we've created a Microsoft 365 certification program. So we take a look at the controls that industry standard frameworks recommend, and we assess your application against that. And if you get the Microsoft 365 certification, that builds trust with IT and will speed in up the deployment of your application. And for IT, we have invested in different views and badging and filtering so they can judge which application fits which role, what is the security profile of these apps. And the thing that we recently brought, which is a win-win-win, win for IT, win for end user, and win for developers, is this auto-installation of these applications and extensibility. So if IT has trust in your application and they want to deploy that to some set of users, they can auto-deploy it so the user doesn't have to go one by one, go find the application and then deploy it. Reach is not enough. You have to get the end user to discover your application. Now, none of us go into work thinking, oh, let's install a new application. Usually what happens here is we go by the recommendation from our colleagues, from our leaders, and of course, IT's recommendations. And so what we are doing in the realm of discovery, of course, we first went and solidified, you know, we were a little chaotic. We've got now one store experience in Office and Teams and Outlook where users can go dis discover applications and extensibility. The thing that we recently enabled that I'm very excited about is what we call seamless discovery with link unfurling. So if somebody sends me a message, and I don't have the application installed that the message refers to, we go to schema.org and we can show you the experience even if the recipient doesn't have the application. This helps the virality of your apps. And then, of course, we've made sure we've added user experiences to get the right application to surface in the right context. So, for example, in Microsoft Teams, if you're on the meeting stage, you can go and figure out the relevant applications in meetings and bring that in. Same thing with channels and chat. And in terms of monetization for ISVs, we've created a commercial marketplace. So in ISV, you can figure out how to distribute our app at a regional level, at a department level, at a global level. And for IT, we've given them tools on how to manage users and licenses. So taking a step back, what we've talked about today, and my call to action to all our developer colleagues here as we go forward together in this world of AI, a, go build Teams message extensions today, because these also act as co-pilot extensibility. Take advantage of our investments in the semantic index and the Microsoft graph by annotating the graph with your data and metadata. And then give us feedback on the Teams plugin, which is really about streamlining your ability to build, debug, and deploy plugins. Now, we have several other exciting announcements beyond Copilot. I'm sure you've heard the word Copilot multiple times today, but we have other announcements. And so I really want you to encourage you to take a look at the breakouts and the demos for some other very exciting announcements. But there are two things I want to spend a few more minutes on. One is Teams Live Share, and the other is Microsoft Mesh. The Teams Live Share, what do you see here is Autodesk multiplayer Autodesk. 
This is an SDK that is now released, is generally available. This SDK is about bringing gaming quality, multi-user capability to your application. You don't have to do any back-end work. We've done the work. We use these ourselves for Excel Live and PowerPoint Live. The idea here is, in a hybrid work, in a distributed workforce, across time zones, across geographies, don't you want your applications, when they are brought in the context of a meeting, to be co-created, co-edited, co-annotated? And that's what the Steam's Live SDK does. This is now generally available. <laughs> Let's talk about Microsoft Mesh. This is about building connection. It's about building fun about immersive experiences. Now, you can create personalized avatars for Microsoft Teams. Your reactions, your personality is represented in a meeting, even when the video is on, because the video fatigue is a real thing. I'm also very excited that in private preview, we have two new capabilities. As developers, you can extend any Teams meeting to be an immersive experience to build stronger connection and it doesn't matter. The cool thing is, it doesn't matter if one of the attendees has a headset on and in 3D and the others are in 2D. It works in this heterogeneous setup. And really, you can build now any meeting. You can build templates for immersive meetings. And the same technology is now available for you to build custom immersive experiences. Imagine there's a town hall or employee onboarding or some social gathering. It's all made possible about Microsoft Mesh. Let's take a look. Sometimes hybrid meetings can feel a little impersonal. Hello. Avatars for Microsoft Teams gives people the choice to show up how they want, helping them feel more comfortable and included. But can we take digital presence a step further? Just a minute. Immersive spaces for teams help interactions feel more engaging, more connected, and more natural. Great job, Miriam. Yeah, nice presentation. But what if we could take it even further by building a custom immersive experience just for your organization? Microsoft Mesh elevates orientations, trainings, and employee experiences by transcending time and space. No matter where you are, you can come together in one place. Connect like never before with Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Mesh. So we've talked a lot about plugins. <clears throat> I talked about how you can build a plugin, have it work in ChatGPT, in Bing, in Microsoft 365. There is one more place that your plugins will reach users. And that place has a billion users, and that is Windows. And to tell you more about that opportunity with Windows, let me invite Panos to the stage. I love it. I love it when people get pumped about Windows. Are you a little bit pumped about Windows? A little bit. <laughs> Me too. All right, I'm pumped also. I'm pumped to be here at Build. I'm honored. I have to tell you first, I just represent this incredible team of product makers. Uh, they're in Redmond. They're around the world. They're watching right now. Let me just say thank you for all you do, for all you put together. I'm grateful. And also thank you to everybody here. Thanks for being here today. It's awesome to be at a live event together. And for those of you online, welcome. It's an exciting day. I think when you look at everything Rajesh talked about, just so, so amazing. It also happens to be an incredible time to be a developer, especially a developer on Windows. Now, we've talked a lot about AI. You've heard a lot about it. It's clear. It is driving the largest technology shift of this generation. There is no doubt the possibilities across industries, healthcare, finance, education, tech, 
even in your own homes, in our homes, the possibilities are endless. But we're moving so fast. Sometimes, every now and then, we can lose sight. What does it actually mean for us as people? Like, what is that transformation for each of us? <clears throat> Now I'm going to do what I'm not supposed to do on stage and ask a question. You never do this in a keynote, just so you know. When you ask a question, if people don't answer it, it's a terrible moment, so just stick with me. <clears throat> so, so true. Don't do it. You always lose your audience. But let me just say, how many of you remember the first time or the early days of the Internet? All right, good. We got a, we got a lot of hands. That helps. <clears throat> You heard Rajesh talk about GUI and the transformation that started to come, but let me just shift it a little bit. I remember for me, and some of you, I'm looking out there, you're like, what do you mean? The internet's always been there, so I'm dating myself. <laughs> and I told, I saw you, I'm like, oh, right, you, you were born in the internet, I got it. I, for me, uh, I remember, I wanted so bad to understand what it was. It seems crazy, right, because it seems so obvious now, but I wanted so bad to understand what were people talking about. And I had this connection, and it made these noises, and it was this dial-up modem, and I tried so hard to get on, and I used this thing called Gopher. I was like, what is this? Why do people think it's good? Then I got my first job. I got to work, and I had this thing. I think it was called DSL. This is great tech, and I'm, now I have a connection. I remember, I remember the first few days at work. Don't get me wrong, I did a little bit of work, but I also remember being on the internet. <laughs> Probably more than the actual work I was doing. It was magic. The feeling, it was, it's indescribable. Even then, even then, in online infancy, the opportunity felt so vast, it was almost impossible. It was impossible to comprehend. I think those first couple of weeks, I read the entire internet, for sure. I, just, I, I read the whole ESPN catalog, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I read everything. But the level of knowledge at my fingertips, it felt transformational, it was transformational. Then came the advent of online dating, Wikipedia, social media, the thing in your pocket, that phone, new device form factor, streaming, and it just goes and goes and goes. But that feeling of immensity, the feeling of possibility, I had never felt it before. I had never felt anything like it. And I haven't since until right now, until right now with you until the advent of AI and the truth of what LLMs are bringing forward and the opportunity that's in front of us. And it, but it's not just about the features or the models. It's about being part of, getting to witness, and participate in something that will change the very fabric of how we live our lives. Did you catch that? We are there together, and it's only the beginning. So, for the devs out there and the devs-to-be, some of you might just be getting started with AI, like me when I was trying to figure out the internet. Or you might not know where to start. Or you're looking at me and you're thinking, I've been creating AI models for a year, I'm the expert, you're not, get out of my way. No matter where you are, no matter where you are on that journey, this presentation is about Microsoft and Windows being there for you. See, I look at technology a lot like you look at a ladder trying to just get up the side of a building or a wall or a fence. You don't go from the ground straight to the top. Some of you can. You have to take steps along the way. Windows will give you the tools, the tools each of us needs, and in this room, to be the wave makers, the creators, 
the pioneers of this next generation of technology to empower yourself, to empower your customers, change the world. And by the end of this keynote, you're going to see a few things. You're going to see how you can increase your, increase your engagement and ability to serve customers with the all new Windows Copilot and AI plugins. Shilpa's going to come out here. She's going to show you how we're accelerating your ability to build seamless workflows on Windows 11. You're going to see Dev Home, Microsoft Store, widgets, other innovations we just released. I don't know if you saw this, but we just released a full build of Windows yesterday. It's so exciting. We're not going to talk in great depth of it today. Shilpa will hit some of it, but get in there, read the blog. It's crazy cool. It's crazy cool. Then Pavan's going to come out here. And I really want you to hone in here. He's going to talk to you about how Windows is fundamentally, and you will see it, the absolute, absolute best endpoint for AI and is the home for every one of your high ambition AI powered apps from edge compute and OSS models coming together. And you heard Kevin yesterday. He really nailed this. Pavan will bring that together for you. Then Stevie will come out and show you innovation and how it's not slowing down. And if you are on Windows 11, whether you're building on it, using it, it is what will keep you ready for what is coming next as we pioneer our way through this opportunity together. OK, let's jump into Copilot. <clears throat> I'm going to come down here. I have to share with you. <clears throat> I, uh, you know, we've been working on this for a while, because we get asked all the time. <clears throat> and when you work on details for a long enough time, you, they're a little bit too close. And so regardless of what it is, regardless if it's uh, a pixel on the screen or one of the hundreds of scenarios we have for the co-pilot coming forward for you, you look at it, you thrash through it, you try and get it right. How you doing? But uh, fundamentally, you then want to tell the story as best you can. So we build this video, we built it with bits, we then record them, we then render them, we try and bring them as perfect. I've watched this video at least a thousand times. I've edited it, I've seen it, but I haven't seen it the way you've seen it. So we're gonna watch it again and I'm gonna watch it with you because this feels awesome and I haven't seen it on this stage, so let's do it together. This is what Satya showed you yesterday. I know, it's super rad. Now, I'm going to frame back again a few things you saw, but I want to talk about them a little bit differently. I want you to come along with me on this journey. Yesterday, Yusuf had showed you the demo that was in the video, but there was a lot of purpose to why we picked that, and I want to just share a few small things with you as we look at it together, and I'll show you a few new things, but let's just let's take a look at this really quick. So the first thing to understand is I get asked a lot, and it, it probably seems super obvious in this room, 
you know, you know how to get to AI, you know how to get to Bing, you know how to uh, invoke ChatGPT, of course you do. But not everybody does, they hear about it, they've heard about the internet. So what's the first thing we do? We bring AI front and center to everybody. For you, think of this as a platform, a funnel for all those plugins that you can bring forward. The two days of plugin palooza that you got, the opportunity to take those and bring them to a billion people. So we put Copilot right there on the taskbar, just simple, important, and it comes there. And you heard Satya say it yesterday, every user is a power user. You start to see that, where you can talk to Copilot, ask it what you need. Think about 30 years of history in settings and the understanding of a platform and the power of being able to just say, make it easier for me, and dark mode shows up because it's easier on your eyes. You may not even know that dark mode existed. Cracks me up when everybody applauded yesterday for dark mode. That was rad, you know. <clears throat> but that power uses, think about any setting within Windows. And, but people don't think of it as settings. That's just a platform. They think about it like this. I need to cast my screen to the TV. Right, that's a power user move on Windows. Not anymore, just write it down and watch it happen. Okay, now there's a nuance I want you to catch. In the bottom right corner here, you can see Copilot talking to you. Not you thinking about what prompt you need. This is the power. This is where the plugin can just wake everything up. Just look at the nuance. It clicks. It then says, would you like to listen to some music? Yes, the plugin shows up. It makes a suggestion. You pick chill vibes. I would never pick chill vibes, but somebody does. But here's the better part. Watch the next suggestion that just happened. If you missed it, the nuance is important. At some point, Windows recognizes You've made a mess. Let me help you organize your windows. You don't have to find Snap, although a lot of you do. You don't have to wonder how, it'll just offer it. And it cleans up your desktop. This is speed, this is staying in your flow. All right, look at this next demo. This is a little different. Okay, here is a Kubernetes manifest in Notepad. All right, in this case, I'll select the config. But watch what happens when I do. It'll copy it, it'll drop it there in Copilot for you, and then simply ask you, after you decide to give it to Copilot, what do you want to do with this text? You clearly copied it. So for me, I've always dreamed of being a dev. Don't worry, I practice, I try, but I'll never be able to claim I end one. But I will tell you, the idea here where I can get the config and just ask it, to explain to me the time it saves me and what it might mean for you. Now think about this on third-party applications. Think about it on anything that sits on your desktop today. What could you do with it? I'm giving you the most simple of demos, but it's powerful. Unpack that thought and work through it. It's really kind of cool, isn't it? Now go to the audio files. Okay, I record voice recordings for myself all the time. I know that sounds weird, but I do talk to myself. The best way to capture what I'm saying is just to listen to myself later, and I can't stand my own voice. Is anybody else like that? But I will listen to it, but here's what's beautiful. Just grab the file, drag it over, make a decision that you just want to hear it translate for you, transcribe for you, and just like that, you're saving time. I only put this demo because it's the one I wanted. <clears throat> it's pretty powerful. This is great. This is going to be perfect for my father when he drags over a note, a voice note, or even a video in the future, and he wants to translate it into Greek, he's going to do so. The power of that, the speed of that, the possibility is endless. 
Okay, I want to take you to this last demo when it's probably the most important one to catch the nuances on, so I'm going to walk you through what's happening. Uh, you can see Microsoft Word here, no doubt. And you've heard a lot about plugins. You saw the Spotify demo. That was an important demo to just understand. Yusuf showed it yesterday. You just saw it here. That plugin showed up. It made sense. But here's another. This one's near and dear to my heart. This is how you move creators into their flow. If you're thinking about the funnel and the opportunity that you have to the billion users on Windows, the billion plus users on Windows, what can happen here, what you will see is when the user says, help me generate a logo, it literally brings up Adobe Express there in Copilot and say, click here, let me take you through. Pause, understand that. Copilot brings you a plugin and just keeps you in your flow and you're creating. When you're done creating it, you drag it back into the chat and then you can share it with all of your friends. The steps of opening, closing, removing, they all go away. When we say we're going to help you do things differently, that AI reinvents everything on Windows, this, what you're looking at, is just the beginning. There is so much power here. If you think about plugins with ChatGPT and Bing, what you heard yesterday Windows is your platform for high ambition AI apps. It's sitting right in front of us. Okay, you're going to get a ton more here in just a few moments from Pavan. How do you do it? How do you build it? How do we get into it? But let me just share this Windows Copilot previews in June. So we're a month away. For those of you who can get on it, let me just, let me just make an ask. Go get it in preview. We're going to learn together. I say that from a true point of humility. We don't understand everything yet, but boy, do I know it changed your workflow. Do I understand for sure the opportunity that's in front of you to bring those high ambition apps to Windows, to have that AI experience, that interjection? And we'll evolve together. What did you guys think? All right, let's, uh, let's switch gears a bit and let's talk a little bit more about those apps uh, that are on Windows. Because Windows 11, look, it's not just about, you know, it's not only, it goes way beyond AI. We all know that. We all know that as developers. You've known that for years. Such an important platform. And we announced Windows 11 nearly two years ago. Two years ago was an announcement right about this time. It was exciting. You've been so good. You've been so gracious. You've helped us build this platform. We have more people at speed getting on this platform than ever before on any version of Windows, choosing it. I'm so proud of it. The usage is growing. The engagement is up. We, we, we love it. There's no question. But this growth, it extends first to developers. It's awesome. Just since the last year, 20 4% increase in developer monthly active devices. That means you, the group of you, more of you developing. And some of this growth is driven by an increase in segments like Python developers, which is cool because that also points to AI becoming an even more critical tool to reach our new customers. But it's also about the fact that the role of the PC has changed. It's fundamentally changed. It's more integrated into our lives than ever before. Windows 11 has created a little bit of a transformation for each of us. The PC became the place to connect, play, work. And we also know there's no limit to what you can do from local compute to cloud compute. And as you listen to Stevie and Pavan talk about that hybrid architecture, which is coming, so sweet, there's no limit. But then you look and you go, there's apps like Spotify, Snapchat, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, so many more that have recently come to the Windows Store. That increase, and you'll hear from Shilpa, has been awesome. And you have to understand, these apps, I know they seem obvious, but they were mobile apps, just mobile apps only two years, only mobile apps two years ago. I mean, it is, it's, it's incredible. Sophia, she's 17. I haven't seen her in a few days. She's traveling. I miss her. She uses these apps on her PC every day. I'm blown away. 
I mean, I love it, but I'm blown away. It's so powerful. You can keep your phone in your pocket and you stay in your flow. It's almost a dream of mine. And now the advent of AI is only making that stronger, faster, more opportunity. WhatsApp's my favorite example, so I want to share it with you. It's, uh, they created an amazing, an amazing Windows app. Um, they made a native experience for the PC. People are loving it. There's no doubt it's the number one app on the Microsoft Store. I use it for my fantasy baseball league. I use it for my uncles in Cyprus. Um, it's really impressive. Best way to understand it, we have uh, Will here, which I'm proud of. He's here to share the news with you with what's happening with WhatsApp on Windows. Hey, Will. Thanks, Panos. It's great to be here and share with the Build community the work we've done in partnership with Microsoft to reimagine WhatsApp on Windows. WhatsApp is the number one messaging app in the world, and it is the best way for people to communicate privately. We're always investing in new experiences, and a priority for us has been to work with Microsoft to create an amazing WhatsApp experience on large screens. Our users deserve the best experience of WhatsApp across every device and platform, especially the more than 1 billion Windows devices. So after years of development, we are thrilled to now have brought the first native desktop companion application to our users. And on new Windows 11 PCs, you can easily find it in the start menu just to click away. It was built from the ground up using native technologies recommended by and in close collaboration with Microsoft. And with the new app, our users will be able to run WhatsApp with significantly improved performance and reliability, benefiting from reduced battery, CPU, and RAM usage, as well as deep OS integrations, such as background processing and notifications. Unlike before, the app does not require you to stay tethered to the mobile app after authentication, so you can use WhatsApp even if your phone is off. Other exciting features such as group calling are now available. People can connect with their friends and family through eight-person video calls and 32-person audio calls. And best of all, all of this is backed by end-to-end -end encryption, so your personal messages and calls remain truly private. We're working with Panos and the team to deploy cutting-edge technology that will make the WhatsApp experience on Windows truly remarkable. For example, we're using ARM64 architecture to enhance app performance while minimizing power usage. We're also leveraging Windows Studio effects, which run AI models on the neural processing unit to create the best video call experiences. We know users are gonna love the functionality this makes possible, like background blur and noise suppression. We're excited to continue collaborating with Microsoft to innovate for the future of private communication. Back awesome, to you, thanks, Panos. Will. Okay, before we move on, I wanna acknowledge something. When I first took on Windows, you, uh, I must tell you, the most passionate group, the most passionate group uh, that gave me feedback, it was devs. As a matter of fact, funny enough, as I was walking through the aisle, I saw a few of you, you had actually sent me PowerPoints with every single detail of what needed to be changed in Windows. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> it doesn't stop. Now, I'm gonna say the feedback was not gentle. <laughs> it's my best way of saying it. Uh, but it was necessary, and I want you to know, like we're listening, it's so important. Like you've inspired us to, prove, to improve everything from the details in the UI to foundational OS changes. Uh, like the new file system optimized for developer workloads, you continue to push us for better experiences, whether it's across terminal, WSL, GitHub integration, and yesterday you saw another response to that in Microsoft DevBox. But today, we want to bring you the best Windows development experience yet. We want to build a home for devs. So we did, and we called it Dev Home. Take a look.
right, we got a lot of exciting stuff to cover from here on out. Shilpa, an incredible product maker, a dear friend of mine, and absolutely one of the leaders in Windows is going to come out here and take you through every single detail, including the latest release of Windows. Shilpa? Thank you, Thomas. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see everyone in person after so long. Um, OK, so let's get into it. When developers asked us to support Bash on Windows, we knew that meant making Linux a first-class en environment with WSL. When developers asked for a modern command line experience, we created one of the most popular projects on GitHub in Windows Terminal. And when power users wanted more flexibility to customize Windows, we launched Power Toys. And together, we've made it a top five community-supported project on GitHub. You were right on all counts. And when I say you, I'm referring to you, Windows developers. We love it when our developers give us feedback on how we can make Windows the best place to create software. And the best part, we're still listening. We've heard from you that it takes too much time and too many clicks to set up Windows for coding. We've heard that disk performance slows down your inner loop productivity. And we've also heard that the Windows experience should have more options for power users. And we're going to address all those three things today. Now, as you saw in the video, we are really excited to introduce Dev Home, a brand new experience in Windows to help developers quickly get productive and stay in the flow. And we know that when you're coding on Windows, you're working in an ecosystem of both local and remote services. Dev Home will make it easy to connect to GitHub and set up your machine to code for the repos you care about, easily installing all the tools and packages you need to get running. And once you've connected to GitHub, all your surfaces across Windows will light up with developer functionality, all the way from File Explorer to Windows Terminal. Dev Home can also configure your coding environments in the cloud using both DevBox and GitHub Code Spaces. The Dev Home setup experience is powered by a brand new feature in Windows Package Manager called Winget Config. You can define a dev environment in a single file and apply it to your local system, to your code spaces, and to your dev box with a single click. Oh, thank you. That's great. Um, the teams worked really hard on this feature, and one of the things we really prided ourselves on is helping you save time. So I'm really glad that um, you know, many of you liked it, and hopefully you will use it as well. And DevDrive is a brand new storage solution tailored for source code, packages, and working folders. Now, inner loop scenarios often deal with repos containing thousands of files. And these really slow down IO constrained builds. So DevDrive is based on the resilient file system, and it's combined with a new performance mode capability in Microsoft Defender antivirus. So DevDrive will yield up to 30% improvement in build times over what you get on Win11 today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's great. Um, and obviously, the less, lesser the amount of time you spend on builds, the more time you can spend creating value for your customers. Now, once you're set up to code, Dev Home helps you stay in the flow by removing distractions with our dashboard feature. The dashboard is a customizable surface that provides a glanceable overview of dev environment state, project information, code reviews, uh, you know, issues assigned to you, and CI system status, alongside widgets that help you quickly tr track your tasks in your to-do list. Now, this dashboard we're showing you is extensible. In fact, we're collaborating with Team Xbox to bring the GDK to Dev Home to make it really easy to get started with dev creation. And because Dev Home is open source, you can contribute to and extend this dashboard as well. Now, this holiday, everyone will have Dev Home in Windows. But you right now can get Dev Home in preview from the Microsoft Store today. OK. I'm going to switch gears a little bit now and talk about all the improvements we're bringing to Windows 11 to increase your efficiency and productivity. Now, these will start rolling out to our Windows Insider program in the coming weeks. Um, obviously, you've got a lot to read in the blogs. Panos talked about it as well. I'm just going to touch on a few of these today. So we're adding native support for additional archive for formats. We also have the ability to easily end a task from Taskbar without opening the Task Manager. Yes, yes. Yes, that is, that is a favorite, yes. 
and you can quickly identify every single access uh, and, and access every single instance of each app with just a single click. Windows Terminal will also now have tab tear outs to help you organize your different shells on Windows. <laughs> I'm so glad you're glad the team's gonna be thrilled. This is awesome. Um, now you heard Panos briefly talk about this earlier, and I'm really excited to share that Windows Terminal is getting smarter with GitHub Copilot X integration. This brings the power of AI to your command line, making it really easy to run correct commands and troubleshoot errors directly in Windows Terminal. And you can also use the experimental Copilot chat right where you need it. To get ac access to the new Copilot features in Terminal, please sign up for the waitlist on GitHub. Okay, so now you've used Dev Home to be productive and you've built a great app. So let's talk about how we can help you acquire and engage customers with your app. Today we have a new release for Windows 11. I know this week has been fantastic. Um, there's several improvements in here. I'm gonna touch upon the widgets board, which enables quick, glanceable content for customers in Windows. Now, if you haven't developed a widget yet, now is a great time to do it. In February, we introduced support for third-party widgets on the board, including new experiences from Meta, Microsoft, and Spotify. Now, the biggest feedback we heard was the de desire to customize the content on this widget board. So as part of the latest release, the board will now have a larger surface area and a dedicated space for widgets right next to the feed. We're giving you more space. And later this year, we will have additional board layouts and the ability to tune the board so you can display widgets only, the news feed only, or a mix of both. The board will also have space for recommended widgets, and we've added on install and banner alerts so we can make new widgets easier to discover. We're really excited to make widgets great for customers to stay on top of what matters to them the most and to amplify your apps and your services. So many new features today. Now, I would love for you to get a chance to build your widget and have it reach millions of customers. So we've talked about how we can help acquire more customers for your app. Now, let's talk about retention. Today, for the top 100 apps on Windows, we see a 40% retention after a user sets up a brand new PC. Now, I wanna make sure you can retain your customers even if they choose to switch to new devices. So Windows is making it easier than ever with your improved restore experience. So as soon as a user sets up a brand new PC, they will automatically land on a desktop. This will include all of their store apps right where they need them. And it's on the start menu as well as on the taskbar. This new capability, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, no sense in losing customers when they set up new devices, so we're happy to have this capability roll out in preview starting today in Windows Insiders. Now, we just talked about widgets, we talked about restoring apps, and now it's really important to complete this picture by sharing what's new with the Microsoft Store on Windows. Now, in the last 12 months, the Microsoft Store has had over a billion unique visitors. Now, what is really energizing is that Windows 11 users are really engaged with our store. They come at nearly twice the rate of Windows 10 users. And we're really proud of our open store principles, allowing developers to bring any app type with industry-leading revenue share. And this has led to outstanding success. We've seen double the amount of apps since Windows 11 launched, and more Android apps as well. And if you're around, we have an on-demand session for the Windows subsystem for Android. I'd love for you folks to drop in and see the team there. In March, we released Microsoft Store ads in the US market. Now, one of our partners who use Store ads shared feedback that they experienced a 25% increase in their app installs. So next month, we're gonna be expanding Microsoft Store ads to 150 regions. Awesome. So now, we begin the next chapter for the Microsoft Store on Windows. As we embark on leveraging AI to help you be more productive and expand your ability to reach your customers. We're introducing a new feature called AI Generated Review Summary. What this does is summarizes thousands of app reviews into a few sentences, making it easier than ever for your fans to inspire and influence future customers of your app, and also to provide summarized insights back to you. Now, one of the biggest challenges in getting your app discovered starts with using the correct search terms. Let me show you how AI-generated keywords will recommend which keywords you should be using based on AI insights that are uniquely available in the Microsoft Store. And I'm really excited to share that we will soon be introducing the new AI Hub in the Microsoft Store 
in the coming months. It's a space that will showcase the best of AI apps for our customers. It will educate customers on how to get started in their AI journey and inspire them to use AI as part of their everyday workflow. Now, you heard me about increasing your productivity with Dev Home, leveraging widgets, getting your app restore experiences so that you can engage and retain your customers. And now you can take advantage of AI Hub to enhance your app with AI in the store. You're about to hear Pavan Davaluri share more about the tools that can help you build your AI-powered app and have it show up here in the AI Hub. Please welcome my friend and colleague, Pavan. Thank you. Thank you, Shopa. That was fantastic. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. That was amazing. Uh, it's really exciting to be here with all of you here today. Yesterday, Kevin shared that Windows is the best client for AI development. And as we just heard from Pons and Shilpa, there are more developers now on Windows than ever before. I'm here to show you how AI can work for every developer here, whether you're just getting started with AI or you're really wanting to take it to the max. Here's what you're going to hear today. If AI is new to you, Windows can get you started with inbox models and APIs. If you're wanting to center your apps and experiences around new AI features, we have Onyx Runtime to help you take it to the next level. And if you're really ready to take AI to the limit, optimize your models, create differentiated experiences, we make that easier than ever with Onyx Runtime, the Olive Toolchain, and of course, the Hybrid Loop. Now, I want to talk to those of you who are just maybe getting started or even don't know where to get started. If you're on Windows 11, we have AI models for you to integrate into your apps right now, no heavy lift. No extra work. You know the Windows Studio effects you saw earlier in Will's keynote? The WhatsApp team was able to integrate those with just a small shift in settings. And you can too. We're building a Windows AI library for you with Windows Studio effects and a range of inbox models and APIs coming soon. <laughs> Thanks, Will. OK, let's take it to the next level. If you're familiar with AI and you want to be able to tweak your existing models, bring your own models, Onyx Runtime is going to be your best friend. And to me, the best way you can show the impact of Onyx Runtime is to see a developer using this technology. Camo is an app that enables any camera to produce incredible video. And you're going to see how they've used Onyx Runtime, Windows devices, and modern silicon. Aiden from the Camo team is here to show us more. Thank you, Pavan. Camo gets you more than great video quality. It also adds next-gen effects like spotlight, AI auto framing, beautiful bokeh, privacy mode, color grading, and drag and drop overlays. These features are great for content creators of all types, whether planning a big meeting, producing YouTube videos, or live streaming. And we're not done making Camo the best third-party native Windows app. With the advent of NPUs on Windows, our roadmaps got even more ambitious. I'd love to show a sneak preview of what we're working right now to bring that vision to life. Camo's Emoji Hands feature is a visible and natural way to signal a reaction when you're on a video call or stream. Perhaps you want to politely interject with an idea, lift an index finger and a light bulb appears, or raise a hand if you need to. And when you need to drop, peace out. How's this for a hand wavy demo? Obviously, there's a lot of ML powering this. Today, Camo uses CPU and GPU to segment the user from the background, to track hand gestures, and to spot those hand gestures all in real time. Up to four models are in play for this. And computationally, it doesn't come cheap. In an app like Camo, we need to use as little resource as possible, because when users are live streaming games on Twitch or presenting in Teams, we can't afford for them to see dropped frames, reduced performance, or jumpy video. In fact, the only way Camo can run the Emoji Hands models in a performant way today is by combining the power of a PC with an attached phone. But thanks to the NPU, Camo can now afford to do much deeper image analysis on every frame of live video, using any camera or webcam. All this without touching the CPU or the GPU. So it's not just much faster, but it helps overall system performance and battery life too. We're confident there's a lot of great things we can build using the ONNX runtime in the new Olive toolchain. 
You'll be able to check out Emoji Hands and other great additions later this year when we ship Camo with NPU support on Windows 11. It's great to see the Camo team democratize amazing video experiences through AI. Cassie Brevu from the Onyx Runtime team is going to join us shortly and show us how all of this works behind the scenes. Before that, to get to the next level, you need Onyx Runtime, the Olive Toolchain, and the Hybrid Loop. This is a great way for you to optimize your models and create performances and experiences that are tailored for your customers. Cassie, super happy you're here today. Glad you could join us. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit more about Onyx Runtime and the Olive Toolchain? Yeah, so sure. Let's start with Onyx Runtime, which makes it straightforward to deploy and run your AI models on any platform, including the web. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that means? Yeah, so Onyx does all the heavy lifting of dealing with diverse platforms and hardware, freeing developers up to focus on delivering delightful AI-enabled solutions. And Onyx Runtime also enables you to target the cloud, which we'll talk about later. That's fantastic. One thing to note, this is the same development pattern and set of tools we use internally at Microsoft for our apps like Office, Edge, and Teams. And this really inspires us to build the best product we can before we share it with you. Now, if I'm a dev who really wants to optimize performance of my models, I'm going to be targeting the rich and diverse Windows ecosystem. And that can be a lot of work at times. Yes, it is. And that's where Olive Toolchain comes in and really shines. Olive brings together all the optimization steps and tools to make this process simpler for developers, from hardware to data processing to inferencing in multiple languages. If you're just dipping your toes in this space, Olive has walkthroughs to get you started. If you're a data scientist that has been creating and optimizing models manually, Olive simplifies your workflow so you can focus on fine-tuning your model. OK, to summarize, Onyx Runtimes help you run across platforms, and the Olive Toolchain really streamlines your workflows. Let me tell you just a quick story about how Olive came about. Um, devs and data scientists at Microsoft working on models were dealing with the same model optimization complexity, I want to say about a year ago or so. And this last year, I think they just sort of threw a fit and they were like, this is just stupidly complex. We have to simplify this. And so it was Yuan on the AI platform team and Stevie who led this effort to go solve the problem. And that is how Olive was born. Cassie, let's show them what this looks like in action. Yeah, so I'm going to take you on a quick tour of what this optimization process looks like and show you the results. We'll use Stable Diffusion for this demo, which is a hugely popular open source image generation model. Let's look at how to use Olive to optimize Stable Diffusion for better performance with the DirectML execution provider. All right. So first you'll see here, this is a JSON config. And this is how I tell Olive what I want to do to optimize my model. Now let's take a look at the generation in this C-sharp WPF application. So this is going to run my stable diffusion models locally. And yep. I've watched this progress bar a lot while building this out. It's taking a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so uh, cool, excellent SD Im image landscape in about 10-ish seconds. That's right, but we can do better than that. Boom. Two seconds, fantastic. Excellent. Can we do that again? Why not? It's so fast. It's awesome. Do it all day. <laughs> <laughs> so 5x improvement in performance. That is impressive. Uh, if you'd like to go check out and get a deeper view for Onyx Runtime, the Olive Toolchain, or really uh, the DirectML Execution Provider, please take a look at our workshops this afternoon. Cassie and our Onyx experts are going to be there. Yeah. yeah? OK, great. Yeah. Now, at last year's build, one of the concepts we introduced that was new was this idea of the hybrid loop. That is about seamless computing across the cloud and the client. It brings together the benefits of the edge, things like performance and responsiveness and privacy, with the power of the cloud to run large models, to house massive data sets, to be able to invoke cross-platform capabilities. And while the concept of hybrid loop can be simple, in practice, it can be complex. Pulling this off requires managing a bunch of services, virtual machines in the cloud. And the beauty of the Onyx runtime is you don't have to deal with any of this complexity. Azure shows up as a coprocessor in Windows, just like an NPU or a GPU. Cassie, let's show us what this looks like. Yeah, so now I'll show you a simple logic flow like this in your code, where you can control whether your model runs locally or in the cloud. And for the data scientists in the audience, Olive enables this hybrid loop by creating a single end-to-end -end model to reduce the amount of code you need to write. So the first thing I'm going to do is select Cloud Inference On. Right. And then I'm going to load my file. 
This is a quote from a book that I like. I'm going to click Transcribe. You can see in my breakpoint that I'm uh, hitting the Azure Execution Provider, yep. and I'm using the OpenAI Cloud Endpoint for the Whisper large model running Absolutely. in the cloud. Yep. So it's going to send that up, and I'm going to get back my transcription. Fantastic. So now, if I want to run locally, I'm going to turn the Cloud Inference off, and we're going to run the all of optimized Whisper Tiny model on my tiny, cute, adorable laptop here. That is a lovely machine, for sure. <laughs> and I'm going to choose a quote from the Kevin keynote yesterday. And then I'll click Transcribe. Now you see I'm hitting my local execution provider. Yep, I see that. And here we go. There you go. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK. Let's take a minute to process that. What we just saw is how you can use Onyx Runtime across platforms, silicon, cloud, and client to take your AI to the next level. I know many of you are web developers. We see you, and we love you. And with Onyx Runtime, or ORT, you are covered for AI development on the web. ORT Web can run your ML models in the browser using web-based tools. It natively integrates uh, constructs like WebAssembly and WebGPU, with WebNN support coming soon. This gives you the flexibility to target a whole range of hardware accelerators and Azure in your web apps, just like you saw in the SD demo and the Whisper demos. But really, how do you accelerate these models and apps across the range of the hardware ecosystem? Really, GPUs and NPUs are two ways, two great ways actually going forward. Let me start with GPUs. Windows 11 has a large and powerful ecosystem of GPUs for AI-accelerated workloads. Running behind me, you should be able to see two LLMs in the class of 10 billion parameter models. The DALI model you saw in action yesterday in Kevin's keynote, and NVIDIA's NEMO model, fully optimized, running on Windows client with NVIDIA client GPUs. You can reach more than 200 million discrete GPU customers today for acceleration of AI models on Windows. That's right. It's kind of amazing, actually. It is kind of amazing. Partnering with NVIDIA, we're making these and other cutting-edge open source models available to you soon. Now, let me switch gears a little bit and talk about neural processing units, or NPUs. NPUs are powerful accelerators, purpose-built to accelerate machine learning workloads. And as we look to the future, NPUs in the Windows ecosystem will continue to scale and grow and get you plenty of opportunities. AMD recently announced a Ryzen Mobile 7040 series, along with the Ryzen AI execution provider for Onyx Runtime. Intel's Keen Bay accelerators are going to be in market shortly. And the Meteor Lake platform comes to market this holiday, featuring Intel's first integrated neural processor, with open Venus support for Onyx Runtime. This means by the end of the year, you'll be seeing a lot more NPU devices in market. And there are already some incredible NPU devices out there showing us the power of AI on modern silicon. The Qualcomm Snapdragon Compute Platform and devices like the Windows Dev Kit 2023 that we in fact announced at Bill last year and the Surface Pro 9 5G are empowering developers to create some amazing AI experiences. Luminar Neo is a great example in my mind. Luminar Neo is about making creativity accessible to everyone and empowering photographers of all levels with AI-assisted editing features. A single feature in Luminar Neo, like automatic background removal, relies on more than 20 models are running behind the scenes. So the speed at which these models run is critical to the user's experience. With the latest NPU-powered devices, this kind of a workload in Windows is drastically accelerated. Like their super sharp AI feature, it uses AI to fill in and you know, sharpen blurred details. On a CPU, this could take about two minutes. But that same operation moved to an NPU takes only about eight seconds. That is extra time for all of us to get creative. Like Shilpa mentioned, thank you. That's awesome. I agree. It's pretty phenomenal. Like Shilpa mentioned, there will be some incredible apps and tools for you in the Microsoft Store AI Hub including Luminar Neo and other amazing AI apps. With Windows, AI-enabled Silicon, Onyx Runtime, and the Olive Toolchain, we are empowering every developer to be an AI developer. And we can't wait to see what you will create on Windows. Last year, Stevie Batiste shared a vision for the hybrid loop and how your models can run on cloud and client. And what you saw with Cassie in the Whisper demo is that vision is now a reality. 
Looking forward, the hybrid loop will continue to get more seamless, providing you with richer capabilities. We believe we're in the infancy of what this transformation can look like. And Panos is going to come back here and tell us what this opportunity looks like in the future. Thank you very much. Sorry, that was Stevie. I'm not Panos. He's a little shorter. Uh, <laughs> I got to admit, I'm actually feeling a, feeling a little vulnerable. I uh, see last year I had a bunch of really cool demos uh, to lean on. Uh, this year, Panov handed me a blank piece of paper and asked me uh, what I should write and say to this audience. And so I did. And I'm here with no demos. <laughs> <laughs> So I have thoughts for you, and I think it's worthwhile. All right, everyone's already said this, but really, AI is bringing unprecedented change. And at times, I really do feel like I'm an intern all over again. And it can be daunting on where to start and even how to think about its impact on your apps. But here are three thoughts for you. First, between Windows, M365, and Azure ML, we're giving you the latest and most powerful tools to help. Pavan and Cassie just showed this to you. They showed the Onyx runtime, the Olive tool chain. Use them. Use them to compile, deploy, and run your AI efficiently across the most diverse ecosystem of devices on the planet. But it doesn't just stop there. Yesterday, Scott talked about new tooling that allows you to fine tune large models with techniques like LoRa with just one click. I mean, geez, taking something at the scale of GPT 3.5 and retraining it, making your own, that's, that's groundbreaking. Something that was so difficult just last year is now so easy. Second, contextualize every interaction. Earlier, Rajesh spoke about the importance of the person being at the center. One of the most powerful ways to do so is use the Microsoft 365 graph and its APIs to help ground the API and personalize every interaction, every prompt. This contextualization is a key differentiator that will enable you to go broad and deep with your customers. And third and finally, Panos just mentioned it. AI is the new interaction technology. But really, what does that mean? 50 years ago, the industry had a milestone event. Take a look at this demo with Doug Engelbart showing off the mouse and keyboard interaction. That impact, that impact of those innovations revolutionized application design. And amazingly, that application structure hasn't changed much since. It's wild. Until now. For the next 50 years, this direct, very explicit interaction model will be completely transformed by what's happening today. And we already see it. Our interfaces are transforming from being exact to being more implicit and fuzzier, less programmatic, more piloted. To seize this opportunity to build the next generation of apps and services, I want to take just a brief moment, because I got to catch a plane actually right after this, so, so just a brief moment, to share the patterns we're seeing and how people infuse AI into their experiences. Three new AI application structures are emerging, shaped by how AI functions relative to your application. Is the AI beside your app, inside, or outside? It's a simple frame to use alongside what Kevin Scott spoke yesterday. In the first application structure, the AI is beside your application, helping, helping your tasks, being a helper. It's like a co-pilot. It is a co-pilot. It's very appropriate that the first types of significant AI experiences are co-pilots because it enables us to get in the game quickly. It keeps the original app architecture definition and is minimally disruptive to what our customers already know. Yet, this new application structure delivers immensely capable tools and experiences that did not exist before. We're excited for the new Windows Copilot and all the category-specific Copilots like M365, Bing, and even the ones you will create. Use them, write plugins, integrate with them. In the second application structure, the AI is inside as the main scaffolding of the app. It's the main input loop. 
Here, you use AI to completely redefine the application interaction model and even its purpose. The interaction model will be less dependent on point and click commands. Things will become much more automatic. We see glimpses already happening in applications like Designer, Klimchat, and Luminar Neo that take pro-level skills and turn them into one-click, slider-driven intents and much more intuitive interactions, all without compromising the result. Here, there are fewer toolbars, fewer deep menus, simply because you don't need them. You want to just intuitively direct the app with what you're managing, and this task is accomplished from within the context of the application. And this brings us to the third and final application structure, where AI goes from executing from within the context of the application frame to AI being outside, executing globally. Here, the AI will orchestrate across multiple apps, plugins, and services, functioning more as an agent. This structure will bring code to the person rather than the person going to the code, allowing the agent to connect, orchestrate, and keep context across entire workflows, across devices, and even across vastly different timescales. You see these ideas already emerging in agents and orchestrators like Microsoft Jarvis, Semantic Kernel, and the Bing Orchestrator. In fact, if you take a step back, the window shell itself is an orchestrator. In fact, maybe one of the most powerful orchestrators across apps, across content, across the graph. Imagine with AI and natural language, you start to see glimpses of the opportunity with the Windows Copilot. And it is here when you get intelligence that's functioning not at just the granular details, but at the higher levels, where you get a mixing of both tactics and strategy. You get both vision and execution. It's like a co-pilot of co-pilots, a very powerful application structure. And with the plugin models from Bing, Windows, and M365, we'll already start to see these outside structures emerging, and you can start creating them today. Each of these three new structures offers unique advantages and purposes. And with the solutions we're providing you, from our co-pilots to our plugin, from our foundational models to our AI runtimes, you can start building on one, if not all three, of the new AI application structures. With all the new amazing technologies and opportunities, I feel like I'm learning all over again. And maybe so are you. But Microsoft is here alongside you providing the easiest tools to build, the latest AI to delight, and the broadest platform to deliver those cutting edge experiences and revolutionary interaction models. Each of our solutions build on each other. This is so important for you to understand, each of them. So use the tools we're building for you to help you optimize and customize your AI for your applications. And that enables you to personalize and contextualize every interaction, which helps you reinvent your interaction model, further enabled by embracing one of the three new AI application structures I just talked about, the side, inside, and outside. Look for ways to use AI and agents to achieve your customers' overall goals, not just their individual tasks. Doing so will make your work more intuitive, yet functional, more natural, yet powerful. All this to enable and reach and empower more people. With that, I would like to bring Panos back on stage to help us close it out. Stay with, stay with me. So on behalf of the entire Windows team, I hope you love what you saw today. What did you think? Rock. Just remember the Windows Copilot is that first high ambition AI workload for the client and remains at the center of the new AI, new AI app platform on Windows. We are grateful for your time. Thank you for all you do. Go change the world.